Hello and welcome to today's lesson looking at angular frequency. So in today's lessons we're going to try and look at calculating values of angular frequency. Now this part of the topic is linked into periodic motion or further mechanics which for AQA A level physics it's in paper one but is not included in the AS qualification. So in today's lesson we're going to try and describe what angular motion is for objects, calculate the angular and linear velocity of an object and look at how you calculate angular frequency which links into the following part of the A level AQA physics specification. So we'll look at a motion in a circular path, understanding that as an acceleration, linking it to centripetal forces, working out the measure of angular speed, understanding how radians are used in measurements of angles. We're then going to look at something which links into centripetal acceleration and centripetal force in upcoming lessons. So what have we learned previously? We've learned previously that there are two types of velocity. There's linear velocity, which you may have just called velocity previously, which is the velocity in a straight line. It's a displacement in the straight line of the object with respect to time. Whilst the angular velocity is the velocity of an object moving radially, it's how quickly or how fast an object rotates in a circle. Now, another name for linear velocity is what we call the tangential velocity. So the instantaneous linear velocity is given the symbol V and it's measured in meters per second. So basically, the instantaneous linear velocity is the velocity an object would travel at if it had no centripetal force acting upon it. It was just moving in a straight linear line. Now that is why we call it tangential velocity, because when you remove a centripetal force, the object would start to move at a tangent to the circular motion, hence the name tangential velocity. So it's the velocity the object would have if it travelled in a straight line if the centripetal force was removed. Now the angular velocity, which is given the symbol omega, which looks like a W, is measured in radians per second. And it's the change in angle through which the object will turn in a particular time. So it's a measure of how much the angle has changed for an object travelling in a circular path. Now you don't need to consider the direction of this angular velocity, you just need to calculate the value. So, angular velocity is the rate of change of angular displacement or how much angle it is covered every single second. Now, we know that a velocity is a displacement over a time. Now, this displacement is an angular displacement, so the angular velocity is the change in angular displacement divided by time. So, it's the same calculation as linear velocity, except the displacement is at an angle, not a straight line distance. Now, this equation is given to you in your examination book, but you will need to memorize the meaning of each term and the units you would require. Now, we can use the equation of angular velocity to derive an equation for linear velocity. Because we know that linear velocity is displacement divided by time, and we know that displacement is equal to r theta when you're carrying out an angular motion, so we can substitute that into displacement. We then know that omega is equal to theta over t, so theta is equal to omega times t. We can take so we can take that quantity for theta, pop it into the equation. And then we can cancel out the t's and we've arrived at our equation for linear velocity. Linear velocity equals the radius of the orbit times by the angular velocity. And that's the link between the angular velocity and linear velocity, which again is given to you in your equation book, but you will need to memorize each term and the units used. So let's just look at an example question. So in the spirit of physics, Luke here is whirled around by his ankles in a circle. The circle has a radius of 1.78 meters, and the angular displacement we experienced was 12 pi over 7 radians in 14.2 seconds. So what is annular velocity? What is linear velocity? Well, firstly, let's calculate his angular velocity. So angular velocity is theta over time. We know theta is 12 pi over 7. We know t is 14.2. So our answer is 0.379 radians per second. Now notice we've got to give our answer to the correct number of significant figures in the question with the correct units. Now whilst pi was given in this particular question, you never should really use pi as a value in experimental physics because that's an irrational number. So it implies an infinite number of significant figures figures to an infinite precision, which you don't want to imply. So we look at the question, 1.78 is three significant figures, 14.2 is three significant figures, so our answer is to three significant figures. We then use that particular value to calculate his linear velocity, 
because of V equals R omega. So then you can work it out by doing 1.78 times by omega 0.379. So the velocity is 0.76 meters per second. Now notice, the value for linear and angular velocities are different. So calculate each value separately. And also, look at the units. They have different units as well. The angular velocity is how quickly the object is rotating in a circle. The linear velocity is the speed the object would travel at if that centripetal force was removed. So, in this topic so far, we've defined several key ideas and concepts of circular motion. Centripetal force centripetal acceleration, angular displacement, linear velocity, angular velocity. So, the centripetal force is the centre-seeking center resultant force pushing an object towards the centre of a circle. The centripetal acceleration is, in essence, the acceleration caused by the centripetal force. It's the acceleration towards the centre of a circle an object experiences due to that centripetal force, because a resultant force causes an acceleration. Now, angular displacement is the total angle that the object moves in a circular motion. The linear velocity is the tangential rate of displacement an object would experience if the centripetal force was removed. And the angular velocity is the rate of angular displacement an object undergoes when it rotates. But there are two more key terms concerning circular motion you've got to understand. Now, they are angular frequency and they are in our time period. Now, the definitions for frequency and time period are consistent across physics and are applied to many different concepts. So you'll have found very similar definitions in the waves module of the course you've covered earlier. So what do we mean by each one? Well, the angular frequency is how many times an object will complete a full rotation, which is an angular displacement of 360 degrees or 2 pi radians in one second whilst the time period is the time it takes for an object to complete a full rotation. So it gives an angular displacement of 2 pi radians. So they are similar, but not the same definitions. Now we can actually, you can actually have an equation to calculate the time period and the angular frequency. So the frequency is the number of complete revolutions that occur every second or per unit time. Now we know that in one complete revolution that the angular displacement is one complete circle, so it's 2 pi radians. So we know that if angular velocity is 2 pi over time, we can say that because the angular displacement is 2 pi in one full rotation. Now the T here is actually the time period, because in our previous um, in our previous definition, we said the time period is the time taken for one complete revolution. So when the angular displacement is one complete revolution, is 2 pi radians, well then the time must then be the time period. So as one full revolution occurs, the angular change is 2 pi radians, and the time taken is the time period. Now we can then link the time value in the angular velocity equation and the frequency equation. Now the equation on the right is the equation for frequency in all situations, as frequency is the number of events per second. So it's always the value divided by time, so it's 1 over time. So what we can do is we can substitute the frequency equation into this particular equation to work out the link between angular frequency and angular velocity. So if we substitute this in, we can now say that omega, Okay, if we look back here, omega is going to be 2 pi times by 1 over t, which is equal to f, so therefore omega equals 2 pi f. And this is our equation which we can use to work out angular velocity and angular frequency. So the unit of this value is in hertz, that is a frequency, and we give it the symbol of f because it is just an angular frequency is just a frequency. So we can say that omega is equal to 2 pi f or f is equal to omega over 2 pi. Now you need to be able to convert between angular velocity and angular frequency because they're very, very closely linked. But remember, for this to work, we have got to have the angular velocity in radians per second, not degrees per second, because we're using this term 2 pi. And 2 pi is the radians. It is the angular displacement in radians. So if in fact you were using degrees and you wanted it, it had in degrees per second, it would have to be 360, not 2 pi. Now this equation of angular frequency is equal to omega over 2 pi, or omega equals 2 pi f, is given to you in your examination book 
but you still will need to memorise the meaning of each term and the use of each. And actually, to be honest with you, working with angular velocities can be very confusing, especially if you've been given linear velocities in a question. So I think it's important that you learn these equations off by heart to help. And in addition, you need to know how and when to use each equation in the different situations and how they can be measured. So how could you measure angular frequency? How could you measure angular velocity? How could you measure angular displacement? Now here's an example of a question looking at angular frequency and angular velocity. So a question here says a wheel is turning at a frequency of 20 revolutions per second. So in one second you've got 20 revolutions. So calculate the, the period in angular velocity of its rotation. So we know that frequency is 1 over time period. So to work out the time period, you say t equals 1 over f. So it's 1 over the frequency, which is 20. So 1 over 20 equals 0 0.050 seconds. Now just note, we've put our units on there, seconds, and we give it to two significant figures because the question is given to two significant figures. We then use that value to work out the angular velocity. So we say that angular velocity is equal to 2 pi f, omega equals 2 pi f, so you say 2 times 5 pi times by 0 0.05, which you can work it through, and you get an answer of 130 radians per second. So that will allow you to work out your answers, as such like that. Now, just to clarify, you don't give your answers 40 pi, because that then implies an infinite number of significant figures, an infinite precision, which you don't have in the real world. So you'd round it to the, the correctness of significant figures to so it's 130 radians per second. So in today's lesson, you should understand that motion in a circular path at a constant speed implies an acceleration and requires a centripetal force. You can work out the magnitude of angular speed and angular uh, frequency from equations and your radians are the measure of the angle. So you should be able to describe angular motion for objects, calculate angular and linear velocities and calculate the angular frequency. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson looking at angular frequency. Uh, in the following lessons we're going to look at the idea of centripetal forces and centripetal accelerations. Have a lovely day and I hope you enjoyed this lesson.